a basis protection substitute sales substitute purchase scenario where in that scenario if we did have a bear spread on you know we would sell cash and hopefully you know hopefully we put it on somewhere in here and the basis wasn't as strong and now we had the opportunity to sell a significantly higher basis to offset our spread risk that we have um, exposed ourselves to a couple more things here um, just freight as a, as a major component, especially the last couple of years, this chart I think gives a pretty good visual on what uh, BN, UP, rail, um, and then barge freight, just the cost associated with moving grain is, has probably been a bigger factor in basis the last two years than um, any time I'd ever seen in the past. Storage space, mm, the reason we saw those freight values, this is, we, we send this out every year and I don't want to focus too much on it, but it, it's just a year-over-year -year crop change based and then using the uh, USDA's um, total storage capacity that they, you know, lags about a year and they figure a pretty steady 2% growth rate. So it's not, it's not necessarily looking at uh, this is, you know, down to the exact bushel, but the visual on this one is the year-over-year -year change. So versus last year, what this is saying is Illinois was 300,000 bushels less had less space to put 300,000 bushels away so we had a bigger crop um, you know North Dakota didn't have as big of a crop as last year so they had the ability to store that and then you know now we know the delivery system in Illinois so what is the implication of having less storage capacity you guys saw firsthand what is the implication on spreads and bases well if the market can't put that stuff away in the fall that means it's likely to get <coughs> moved on to the market. Uh, maybe in a time where the market's saying, hey, I don't even want this. I'm paying you a lot of carry forward. Freight values are really high, um, but there's no ability to store it. So there are millions of bushels, right? Yeah. yeah. The bushels yeah. From, from last year. Oh, excuse me. Um, real quick, we talked to futures contracts. I'm going to build a little bit into DP. We'll touch on this a little later in, in the origination part as well. So I'm not going to focus too much on this, but I want to look at the, the chart of it. But the late price, ultimately all it is is a contract that allows the farmer or producer to say, I don't want to do anything today, but it gives the elevator the ability to move that grain. It gives you ownership versus storage, which you have to have per warehousing license always have to have storage on hand. DP <coughs> passes ownership to us, but we don't own that via basis or flat price yet. Usually a service fee associated with it. Um, some, sometimes it's cheaper than storage if, if elevators offer both. Uh, I think a lot more people are just going to DP only, in, at least in the central belt. The risk with this contract is selling you something you don't own um, and we'll work through this here shortly, but especially in your guys' scenario with short space, there's a lot of market structures where DP is advantageous and says all day long we'll give free DP if the bean inverse is huge, we want grain today and we're going to turn around and sell it. There's limited risk in that. We still can use DBE as a, as a, a target for that, but where we do have risk is when the market, like we said this past fall, is offering a carry in cash, in freight yet we still have to sell DP or sell a value that we don't own. Because now we're shorting ahead of a, of a carry market with our bid structure telling the farmer it's worth more down the road than it is today. So why do we want to sell that? We don't have space. So in that scenario, we better have a, a, a service charge or a way to cover a little bit of that risk. Don't get delayed price, confused with deferred payments. Um, why do elevators use this type? Well, ultimately, everything it says up there, I think, is that you know there's times the structure, like I said, is really incentivizing the market to, to get their hands on free DP. Um, but more often, as a fall outlook, when you think about it, DP is really a flexibility. Um, you know, there, there's other avenues. Most of them probably aren't friendly to the farmer, but you know, what are your alternatives to free DP? If you basis if, contracts. Forcing them to price basis, forcing them to sell, shutting the doors. 
Um, you know, but you, you as a short space elevator have to have the ability to move that grain. So you can't, they can't just come in and say, I don't want to do anything. You don't want to shut the doors. So DP gives you flexibility versus storage more than anything. And that just highlights what we talked about. Here's a scenario of this past fall. Freight, SIF. You don't want those things moving in opposite directions like that. So our cost <laughs> to get grain down to the golf is here, and what the golf's willing to pay us is here. So the market structure there is not I want to get short my DP. Uh, there's probably carry in the spreads. I didn't put that up there, but this is for corn. This is a weekly uh, weekly barge freight and stiff corn basis. That's the definition of a bad day when you agree, Scott. Yeah. Well, October, that's October, right? Yeah. Basically October 1. Yeah. That means no sleep. <laughs> yeah. And, and just real quick for everybody in the room, everybody knows that when we was shipping grain, I don't know how many barges we ship in a day, we didn't own those bushels. We were doing a DP short. We were selling those bushels in, just what Nate's talking about, we'll just and then managing through them. I think I touched base on that in one of the managers' meetings. You know, talking about how we Scott's all right, the grain know. that was in our warehouse at one time. Pieces, this is a good technically on any of it. What this actually equated to? Oh. Yeah. So, and unfortunately, this doesn't go all the way up to that freight value. So we're yeah. gonna, we're going to use a little alternative method. This, this is a barge freight thing. calculator. So, uh, the quick and dirty on it is corn on one side, soybeans and wheat on the other. That's your differential in pounds per bushel. You, you know, or 60 pounds or 56 pounds of corn, 60 pounds of beans and wheat. And the if you look at these, the region numbers. Those are associated with different points along the river system. And so the benchmark percent in the middle is what the value daily traded barge freight. Now, in this scenario, we're talking about 1,100 freight. Well, this thing only goes up to 650%. So how do we do that? Well, look at the corn, and we know it at, at tariff, okay, at 100%. <coughs> Chicago, which is where we're going to figure basis, zone 8, is worth, or cost what? If you go 100% on your benchmark on the corn side and look at zone 8, region 8. 16.2. Right. So that's saying that at 100% barge freight, it's going to cost me 16.2 cents a bushel to get grain from Chicago down to New Orleans. So... I don't have a calculator in front of me, but if you say it's 550 on there, yeah, they're working through it. So yeah. it's 550 on there. Yeah, five. Go to 550. There isn't a 550. 555. Yeah. Close to 1100. Yeah. 178. Okay. Just do a thousand percent. Yeah. Well, and that's yeah. So if you if you use a thousand. Ten. Dollar sixty-two. Dollar sixty-two. That's what it would cost us. Okay. So this market structure right here is saying the freight. Is going to cost a dollar sixty-two out of Chicago. So we know we own it at what in Chicago? Six so one sixty-two plus six cents. Dollar sixty-eight would be SIF delivery value. And we were at. I think 50, I won't even use a low tick. Yeah, let's let's Probably use 50. fifty. Fifty. So we are significantly below delivery value there, and we're selling a fifty over SIF, and from our location, assuming Chicago, I didn't do this case specific for you guys, it's costing us around $1.60 to get that grain down there. So Jeff, what was the one word that comes to your mind when you heard that? Ground. Ground. <laughs> Ground. Ground piles. <laughs> Ground. A lot of conversations. And, and ultimately, you know, not to focus too much on the merchandising, but that's what that type of scenario does. You're, you're, you're selling a significantly cheaper basis and freight and basis in forward months is creating a huge carry. So if you're talking about a one month carry of 60 cents 
or a three month carry of 60 cents, meaning the market's going to offer 60 cents more in, in three months than it is today, people start to get very creative. You know, for 60 cents a bushel, you can put grain on the ground, exposed, you know, but it's, it, obviously these things are, market conditions yeah. change daily, so it's not as easy as that, but that's, you know, that's what happens, both in the rail markets that we've seen over the last yeah. year and this type of barge freight scenario. Scott, take it just a minute and zone people in, where, how did you look at, from our standpoint on here? Okay. Look at, look at March corn today, we got river opening, uh, you're going to yeah, so we're, we're at about three, uh, 365, so, so everybody just little, do that with your corn. Put your little thing on 365. 365. And then number 14 is ours, so it's about 52 cents a bushel. So in the fall, we paid upwards of the dollar fifty or so. We mm -hmm. weren't quite as high as Chicago, but close to a dollar fifty for some barges this fall. Yeah, and right now, much. with the river getting ready to open, it's only costing fifty-two cents. So there's a possibility of a dollar a and bushel. And what's SIF done in the meantime? Gain SIF is about right. steady. It's about the same. So, so, so everybody know how to look at that. You got corn on one side, you got beans on the other. It's kind of a neat way to look at kind of where, what freight's doing and what it costs. Yeah. And how, and we're about 365 right now on freight for, for nearby. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of moving pieces, but this is a tool that I honestly, I had, I've heard the first time I heard DBE and barge freight was probably six years ago. And I still have it at my desk because oh, I yeah. still calc, you know, what does it mean for, mean for grain movement if barge freight's this? Well, you know, I know the, I can calc out the Chicago rate pretty quick, but, you know, alternative locations and, and unique grain movement, why would it go to that location on the river? Well, what's their freight cost? Um, it's just a good way to compare stuff. Even if you see a freight value and you hear a SIF number, you know, is it costing more, more to get grain down in the Gulf than what they're paying? Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Oh, I did have it written out, but yeah, and, and on top of that, that was strictly the carry, that fall scenario we were looking at, that was strictly the carry in just your freight and your basis. The board was also offering carry, so you would add that in, that's those future spreads. There was 28 cents of carry out to July, so that's an additional incentive to hold grain. The opposite, and we've talked about inverted markets, but this is a DP opportunity, so Decatur soybean basis. You know, last, in the summer of 13, when we had basis to cater $1.80 over. Now, maybe that was over, a, you know, the no, but all that aside. And spreads inverted $1.20, just the front month spreads there. So the no, uh, July no, that's, that's the market telling us, man, you know, let's move that grain today. If you don't sell that, if you roll through that, or you decide, I want more money than that. Historically, beans went to this one time. You know, that changes every year, but what you're committing to there is saying, you know, if you got a dollar inverse and basis is a dollar over, you're saying that I'm gonna roll through that. I'm willing to own beans at $2 over the July and sell them at, you know, potentially much lower value. So. Quantifying what the basis and the spreads in an inverted market is really the opportunity that you're giving up if you don't don't move that grain. So, I went a little longer than expected, but I appreciate the comments and, and uh, I'm glad you guys are chiming in with stuff. But I'm going to turn it over to Jeff here for just some outlook and um, a little right, bit of explanation. Do you need a little break? Yeah, yeah we'll we'll go ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Well, I was trying to see if the sun's kind of shining on it, it's like good. Making sure that I'm not bumping it, right? Now. I don't know where the pause is. Yeah, because I'd be sitting there on the screen like this. Oh, I know. Huh. Right, right.